Hello, uh, this is um, part three, which is actually the fourth video in this series on AI art and modeling. Uh, one of the, I'm not, because of copyright issues, I'm not showing any videos. Instead, what I do is I link to the author, the original uh, video editor uh, or video author. Uh, and this is really good. I kind of recommend this, how GPT-3 works. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm talking a bit about literary creative production as opposed to uh, what's sometimes called fine arts uh, production. So instead of talking about image synthesis, images as new art, we're talking about text, uh, you know, things that you write and read in your uh, native natural language. So yeah, go ahead and check out Arthur's uh, video here. It's a little bit humorous and uh, does talk a little bit about how a kind of high level view on how GPT-3 works. Uh, what is GPT-3? It's the latest in OpenAI, that's the organization. It's the latest in OpenAI's, uh, what's so called transformer models which operate on sequences, which is basically what you're dealing with with text. It's long sequences. And GPT-3 essentially just takes the text that you enter as a prompt and completes it. It actually, you know, suggests a set of probabilities for the next word. And if you continue that iteratively, you end up with a GPT creating paragraphs and articles and all kinds of really cool things. Uh, GPT-2, which was open sourced, preceded GPT-3. Uh, GPT-3, I believe, <clears throat> came out in the beginning of this year, 2021. So here's an open source thing you can actually try. You can click on this, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this right now. I was wary of the monk as we stood in the cloister. This is just some text I generated because I want to know how this would be uh, completed by, in this particular case, GPT-J, which is a 6 billion parameter model, as opposed to, I think, the 175 billion OpenAI GPT-3 model. Uh, there are models that are even higher than that. Uh, Microsoft, working with NVIDIA, um, has created a, a larger model for doing text and sequences. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna write in real time, which is always dangerous, you know, do a real time demo. I'm gonna say, I was wary of the monk as we stood in the cloister. So um, as you can see from this, this web page, then, this is something that I entered, and you've got temperature and something called top P or probability. And these are hyperparameters that you can play with, which will change the output. So I'm going to run the model. This may, it may take up to a minute to generate. So hopefully it doesn't take a minute. Um, actually, it took a lot less than a minute, so that's really cool. So this was developed by Eleuther AI which you can see in the upper left right here. And um, like some other websites, like Hugging Face is, a, is another one, you can actually try some of these AI programs out. But let's see what was created by this, right? If we kind of zoom in and we look at the result, it shows, first of all, what I entered to GPT-J. Right, that's what I entered. And then it, the machine generates everything else. The monks were allowed to enter the monastery at will. And one monk was there as a guide to guide the group through the monastery, another to play the recorder, <clears throat> and a third to be a tour guide. So very cool. Uh, and uh, so this is kind of what you get with, with GPT-3 as well. But uh, GPT-3, it's, it's in beta still and uh, you have to gain access through invitation in order to use it. But what's nice about this model is anyone can use it. You just go to this and click on things and you're 
away you go. So I'll just get out of this and get back to the slideshow. So I was wrong. I just realized this GPT-3 announcement was actually dated May 2020. So about six months before uh, I had mentioned, you know, I'd said 2021, but not too far off. Now there's some um, down here, this, whoops, I'm sorry. I'm going to go back here and trying to find my mouse and unable to, but that's all right. You can, we can read the text. Wu Dao 2.0 from Beijing Academy of AI has a staggering 1.75 trillion parameters. So that's a larger neural net. Parameters are also called weights and weights are numerical values within the neural net attached to the links to the, to the lines that you'll see. Uh, very recently, NVIDIA and Microsoft created this Megatron Turing natural language generation model. Uh, the problem with, with things like the NVIDIA and Microsoft one is it's not available, right? I can't, you can't get to it directly. It's likely that um, Microsoft will roll this out as maybe a feature, an extra cost feature of one of their current products. I mean, you can imagine, for instance, being in Microsoft Word and having the ability to have auto completion on text that you enter. And um, I might add something I don't have in this slide deck, but it's really important to remember is, you know, OpenAI also has a, a kind of a pre-trained or finely tuned GPT-3 for code, like Python, like JavaScript. Uh, it's called Codex. C-O-D-E-X, and that is also available, but again, it's you have to get on the invitation, you have to submit an application, and on the, and take, uh, on the uh, invitation page, and then go ahead and uh, get invited, get accepted, and get code completions. I mean, so, you know, just natural language completions, like I, want, I did with the monk in the monastery, that's only part of it. The other part are things like um, code completions, because code is, after all, text. Now, I worked a little bit, just very briefly, with Professor Turner, who's in Arts and Humanities at uh, University of Texas at Dallas, where I'm located. And we just had a game, really. We kind of said, you know, Professor Turner has, he's an accomplished poet, and he created, a, what I did is I took a verse from one of his poems. The first four lines that you see on this slide are from Professor Turner's poem. And then the machine created the other, the next two verses. And what I used in this case is I didn't use GPT-J, I used GPT-3 from OpenAI. And to make things a little bit more complicated, there's different engines engines that you can use within GPT-3. So I use the Curie engine for no particularly good reason, but uh, the Da Vinci engine is the one that is the most powerful, but also cost more. Uh, Curie costs a little bit less, but produces some really cool results. I did some experiments with Emily Dickinson's poetry back in May of this year. And I just found it a lot of fun to run experiments on her poetry. And I did what I did with Professor Turner's poem. And I'd enter maybe the first one or two or three verses and then see what would happen if I tried to complete those. And, and some of that description is at the bottom here in, in more detail. But um, this was is thoroughly enjoying. And again, for those in the literary parts of creative production, as opposed to the fine arts parts of creative production, you know, this is a, a really good thing to, to play around with.